I would like to introduce our sort of almost brand spanking new um, executive director of DPLA. He's been with us since early December. Um, we have been super excited to have him leading the team. Um, and so uh, please welcome John Bracken. Thanks, Kelsey. Um, so we'll gush about Kelsey later, but we would not be here at all with, not with Kelsey's efforts. So preemptive thank you to Kelsey for bringing us all here and putting us all together. And we'll embarrass her more later. Um, so good morning. Thanks for coming. Thanks for taking time out of your work and your lives to come be here with us. Um, I don't know if I'm brand spanking nude. I did count a uh, number of days. Today's literally my 100th day. So like we didn't plan it that way, but if we had planned it, this would be, I think, a great, great occasion for my 100th day. Um, I've already learned, just even by having coffee for five minutes, uh, begun to learn a lot, which I think is part of my goal in, in day 100. Um, this feels really important to all of us because this is an opportunity to make real what we've been talking about from our inception, right? This is the first opportunity we've had to all be in the room together. And as Emily said to me early on in the process, maybe even during my interview process, that you know, we actually can get people in the room and ask them things and work together. And this, the fact that this infrastructure has been built for months and really years over time, and now it's actually here in fruition, is really exciting to, to all of us. Um, so this meeting's not about us or me, but I figured I should tell you a little bit just about myself and, and my past. Um, my career has really been centered on the web and the internet and how to leverage those tools of communications networking to make the world a better place. Uh, it started off, I was doing community organizing and immigrant rights work in California in the 90s and later shifted to philanthropy where I worked with Knight Foundation and MacArthur Foundation and Ford Foundation and was at the table and part of creating institutions like Creative Commons and the Center for Civic Media at the MIT Media Lab, um, and even at some of the early conversations that led to the Digital Public Library of America, which is part of the reason I'm so excited to be here, having seen the seeds of the idea and now seeing you all in the room with a whole different manifestation of those original goals. Um, you know, part of my work had been really emphasizing the strengths of the internet. And as we had those conversations, especially in the last few years, one of the places we landed on were the importance of the institution of libraries and museums. Um, libraries in particular, we kind of found, that, you know, I was running an innovation technology program. So some of us, including myself, were sort of surprised that we were landing on libraries as key institutions for the use of technology and for improving society. But as we looked at it, we realized, well, one, specializing in curation of quality information, Second, the notion of being welcoming to anyone. And third, the trust that our institutions have um, are such key qualities as we make this often difficult transition to a digital, a digital, digital civil society, um, which I think for most of the country and a lot of, a lot of the world right now feels like it's in crisis, right? What does democracy mean like, mean in a digital world. Um, something as, as simple as the, or as recent as the indictments that we saw from Mueller last month, um, which really poked at the, the way that this infrastructure that a lot of us on Team Internet were so excited about, right? We built up these amazing tools called Twitter and Facebook that were gonna make the world, make us closer. It's gonna make it easier for us to share our lives, to find information, to work with one another across a, across countries and across ideology, realizing that for bad actors, those same tools can be weaponized against us and against the values we care about. Um, and and I've been a, you know, there've been a set of conversations over the last year or two about what do we do with that. Libraries are so often at the center of those conversations. I was, for instance, I was at the um, a big meeting that my former. Uh, employees at Knight Foundation do about 400 local-based funders last month. Libraries were discussed or mentioned at almost every panel 
and were represented on, of about 60 speakers. I counted one librarian at the table. Um, something I might not have noticed uh, before December. Um, and, and I think these conversations are so urgent and they're so broad right now. And the values that we have and the skills that we have are so important to be at those tables. And we're only gonna be there if we build resilient institutions that are able to survive and thrive and that are able to tell our stories. Um, which is why today is so exciting. Um, you know, I think I, I went back and looked at the notes that came out of our first convening in 2010, our, the kind of first thought, th thought exercise that landed on the notion of a digital public library, the founding charter. And the phrases that came out of kind of the core sentence there was the goal to build an open distributed network to draw on the nation's living heritage in order to educate, inform, and empower everyone in the current and future generations. Um, all that's very broad and very aspirational. It, we take it as a serious charge, but the exciting part is, you know, th the notion of an open distributed network feels a lot less abstract looking out and seeing you guys all here and knowing the hard work so many of you have put together to build this infrastructure and to get us here together. This is the turning point for us. We're past the aspiration phase of building the network. Um, we're here. Um, you're going to hear from us about, uh, from a lot of my colleagues, about what we're doing. But this is less about us and more about what we can do together. Um, let me just share three things that we heard as we listened. By we, I mostly mean Kelsey. So I'm stealing from the, the data points that Kelsey has, has learned from talking to you and, and Michelle and Emily as well, of course. Um, which hopefully you'll hear reflected in the next few days. Audience, what do we know about who our users are um, and who's not, and how do they use our material? How and why do they find us? Once they find us, what do they do? Um, sustainability, how do we pay for our work? What can we do together to increase the resources available to us? How can we better tell our stories to a wider array of constituents? Impact, which is, you know, all these are very broad topics. Impact's big, but how do we understand, measure, and talk about our work and how it benefits real people and real communities? And what do we need to do differently or talk about differently to expand that network? And I think about that both with my DPA, DPLA hat on, but I think as a network, we need to think about that. I'm really excited that this is the first tangible step uh, for us coming together. I'm you know, we don't know yet what exactly is going to come out next, but I have, a, by the end of this meeting, I think we'll have such, I personally will have such a greater sense of where we are, what our questions are, what we can do together. Um, I'm excited to move, I think we kind of have the noun now, like we're, we've got the infrastructure, we've got the structure. N part of what I'm going to be listening for coming out of this is what are the verbs, right? We have the, pro what are the processes and structures, what are the things we need to do to enable us to not just talk with each other, but to design and build and strengthen the work that we're all doing of the entire network. Um, I was clear as I looked at you know, the possibility, I had a great job at Knight Foundation where you know, I got to listen to people's ideas from across the country. And part of the real appeal to me was this notion, this, this ambitious goal of an organization that really is dependent on a network. That if, we, if the network doesn't succeed, if you don't succeed, we don't succeed. And I think that's just intrinsic to who we are and how we work together. Um, um, I think you know, the, the goal here is to identify specifically, as we go about our own strategic planning in the, over the next few years, is what are the activities and approaches and, and practices we need to develop to ensure that we're all working stronger together for better impact, for uh, better resources to do our work, and for better um, understanding among communities and, and individuals across the country. Um, so I'm really excited to, to be here to see all of you today. Um, it's, it's partly a tribute, and this is not a DPLA event. Um, we wouldn't be here without Georgia State and, digital public, and the Digital Library of Georgia, so thank you guys for, for hosting us. Um, University of Georgia is our co-sponsor. Um, 
Um, Jennifer tried to poo-poo how much work the planning committee did, but Jennifer, Lee, Nicole, Kinza, and Christina, thank you so much. We can actually give the planning committee a <laughs> applause. Um, thank you guys so much for uh, for being part of this with us. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have been able to do this just with us.